Our sponsor for the month is Legionnaire Ministries. Legionnaire is offering Table Talk Magazine to our listeners at a steep discount. Stay tuned for more details. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Now, it's to keep it real. Oh, gosh. Uh, here we go. go. We're keep yep, it real. Thanks. Uh, on, on, on one hand, like today is a good day because mm. it's the Lord's Day. Yep. Yep. Wonderful. We have uh, baptized a couple of ladies. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, it's a good day mm-hmm. on, on that level. But it, it like people know like you can have like a day like it's the Lord's Day it's a good day the weather's out it's nice mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but then real life like other other aspects of life can encroach and like make that day impossible to bear oh gosh yep and yeah, uh, one of us is having that kind of a day you know I feel really bad for you Joe I just think <laughs> right. that uh, you're gonna you'll pull through if you had enough faith like <laughs> you just gotta pray a bit more you know so Jimmy is. Uh, is in the midst of a day of affliction. Oh gosh, it today has bad. been the worst. It's just the absolute worst. Like I have, I just want to crawl under a rock. I, I've seen Jimmy stressed out. I've seen Jimmy, you know, a little down. Not, he usually doesn't get down. I've seen Jimmy like uh, tired. I've seen a lot. I've not seen Jimmy like this. He's yeah, yeah. he's getting beat up in God's providence right now. Yeah, lots of fun, lots of fun. So yeah, it's just been. Uh... Hey, but at least the episode that we recorded uh, oh, for shush. today got deleted. Or didn't get no, recorded. it didn't get deleted. It, it just somehow something happened. Talk about what. piling on. So we recorded uh, oh. an episode uh, that we're re-recording right now yep. in the midst of Jimmy's terrible day. <laughs> yep. He can't even just like, well, at least I don't have to worry about the podcast. No, nope, <laughs> because exactly. it didn't work. One of the and that was actually going to be like, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take care of this and that, get ahead on that, and I'll be uh, like, get this one. And it's then the, the first next time one. we've been ahead for a while. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm just going to go ahead and get them done. That way, it's all in there. We're good. At least I can control that. And then, nope, of course, of course I can't. Okay, so of course we're, I can't. We're, we are re-recording. So I don't want to hear anyone talk about the audio on this. Anyone talks about audio, I'm going to I'm gonna s- smack my phone. You can't Jimmy's going to start punching babies. I'm just going to start punching babies. <laughs> I'm just going to grab the first one. <laughs> they, they, we got lots of babies, so you're gonna, we're going to create problems in our church if you com- criticize Jimmy on the audio. Um, <laughs> don't you say a word. So, man, I'm seriously, I, I'm sorry you're having a rough day. Yeah, and just so you guys know, so you know, here here's what you do. You know, your 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 buddy's stressed out, and it's a little awkward because like your 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 friend is is hurting or something, and you feel awkward because they feel awkward. You don't know what to say. Um, oh, so what what did you what what did you say to me today to kind of encourage me in the midst of my affliction? Oh well, first of all, I was getting ready to say something, and now you want me to go back. And okay, so in the midst of when 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 Jimmy uh, was mm. let's see, it was it was right. It was in the during second service. During second service, yes. I said to Jimmy in passing. So um, hold on, but for what was I doing? What was I? What you was were I, sitting there. I know, but what was I? What was I? Uh, what well, I'm explaining. I'm telling. Okay, let me ahead. tell. Am I going to tell a story? You, you tell like, a okay, story. okay, you I'll tell a story. story. Just don't miss. So I'm passing Jimmy in the hallway, and I said, "By the way, Jimmy, um, I know it's you know you had to fill in for me and do communion mm, and last minute, but continue, yeah, and yeah. prayer and communion." Mm. Uh, you know, it's no last minute when you're a pastor, but anyways, so, um, so you had to do communion and, uh, and, and, uh, uh confession. confession. Yeah. Yeah. Where, where I poured so, my heart out in the midst of my affliction. And I'm I know, sharing. And I know. I'm sharing. Yeah. You, you, know, you were sharing everything. I was apparently. Sharing, apparently. Yes. Uh, so I said, and, you know, make it easier next time. Maybe just chop that whole thing in half. It was pretty long. Uh, which a, obviously I'm joking because I, mm. I didn't know mm. the details, but as I was, because I was getting baptized, I was baptized and I had to go get changed and everything. So while that was all going on, I, I, I thought, like, it, it sounds like it's going pretty long. Mm-hmm. And I asked somebody that was right there, and they're like, yeah, it's kind of long. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, was, I told Jimmy, hey, you know, you could shorten it up. I was just kind of giving him a hard time, and uh, he didn't take it real well. And I'm like, hmm, I must have been a real jerk, which I was, but that's not what was no, bothering him. It, was it. What was bothering him was he's in, he was in the middle of this really bad Yeah, day. it was just another thing. I was just like, oh, okay, cool, cool. Anything else okay. I failed at today? Well, let, oh, let's go well, talk to my wife. I don't know. Yeah, let's. Uh, so I would say that, um, but here was, it was uh, my point was, and you see your friend, you know, like, oh man, this is awkward. What do I do? And sometimes you're gonna make jokes and try and make light of it, mm-hmm. but you can't really do that all the time. And sometimes no. it's not appropriate to do that. But what you can do 
is you can just say, hey, brother, hey, sister, can I pray for you right now? That's right. And you just pray for them. I, I'm still waiting. Yeah, I, don't, I'm not, I ain't doing that. <laughs> I'm telling them what they should do. Oh, good, good. You let yeah. them know. Yeah. So, yeah, pray for each other, man. Your brother or your sister is mm-hmm. stressed out, man. And um, it will be an encouragement to them. And at the very least, it'll make you look good. Oh, exactly. And that's what's really matters. That's what's really that's what's right, important that's what's in the midst of all this, right? <laughs> all right, so, Joe, we're looking at the 1689, Chapter 2, Paragraph 3. We're going to want... finish up Chapter 2. Uh, what, on the Trinitate. So the why, don't Trinitate. You go ahead, why don't you go ahead and read that? Ooh, I'm not ready for that. All right, hang on. Let me bring it up. <laughs> Oh. You read it last time we recorded. I know. Well, so. that was last time. All right. So time. now I got to bring it. Hang on. I got to. Oh, you know, we could just actually just read the parts as we go through. Do you want to just do that? And then yeah, let's, read, let's read the whole thing. Okay. I'm just trying to buy you more time for you. I thought you'd be faster. No, no, no. Man. All right. Here we go. The right. Oh, goodness. Are you serious? I thought, you don't have it bookmarked? No. Oh, maybe I do. I don't know. Of course. I don't, why I don't, know, I don't know how to do it. It's an, another one of those days for me. Yeah. This is just one of those days. You, you fe- failed at picking a best friend. All right. Uh, Go ahead, Joe. Paragraph three. Yep. In this divine and infinite being, there are three subsistences, the Father, the Word or Son, and Holy Spirit, of one substance, power, and eternity, each having the whole divine essence, yet the essence undivided. The Father is of none, neither begotten nor proceeding. The Son is eternally begotten of the Father, the Holy Spirit proceeding from the Father and the Son. All infinite, without beginning, therefore, but one God, who is not to be divided in nature and being, but distinguished by several peculiar relative properties and personal relations, which doctrine of the Trinity is the foundation of all our communion with God and comfortable dependence on Him. Finishing up on this mysterious, Mm -hmm. amazing, beautiful doctrine of the Trinity. And it's a, when you're reading this, it's a, it is mysterious, and I think most of us, I mean, most people I know are are pretty grounded enough to say, hey, I believe in the Trinity, but it is a mystery. There's a lot there that I don't understand. Yeah, there's and some things that we're just not going to comprehend. God is just too big, too majestic. Yep. And and, at least, and you talk to like legit, like R.C. Sproul-level theologians you know, before his passing, of course, and uh, they would be like, yeah, there's a lot of mystery in the Trinity there. Um, oh, how yeah. it is, but uh, but what has been revealed about God as a Trinity um, is true, can be comprehended to a large degree, like what has been revealed, and uh, in, it involves, you know, especially in the way it's put together here in the 1689, some rather technical language. Oh yeah, I mean, one of the words right off the bat is uh, subsistences, mm-hmm. right? And so, I mean, what are we talking about there, Joe? Because you don't you don't find that word, you don't right. find that word in the Westminster, right? Oh no, they can't handle that word. Oh, they can't handle that word. No, it's too technical for them. Oh, they're not smart enough. Is no, that, is that that's exactly yeah. The Presbyterians, they're like, you know, Presbyterians were like homeschooled, but like not by the smart homeschoolers. They were like unschooled, basically. Oh, I, I, yeah, I think I'm they were like unschooling. unschoolers. They were unschooled. Is that what it is? No, no, maybe not. No, probably not. No, so they don't. They, they use um they, person persons, or yeah. something like that. The word subsistence here is used, and it is it is strange, right? Because it's not a word that we're familiar with at all. No. So uh, subsistence, even it, it it can be equated with person. That's not a problem at all. Um, but what the Baptists did here was they went with a word that was a bit more technical because Baptists Baptists kind of have like little man syndrome. Okay, and I know something about little yeah, man yeah. syndrome. Yeah, so they got the JoJo Baggins. They got the JoJo feelings. Baggins syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. And um, JBS. which means like they had to constantly prove themselves to other people. Hey, we're Baptists. We're not Anabaptists. Okay, we're Baptists, but we're Orthodox. Mm-hmm. We're Evangelical. You know, we we are we are Reformed. You know, it's, it, it, here's here's how look at what we have in common. They're yeah. constantly proving themselves. So their little man syndrome <laughs> and their 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 uh, ability to be very precise moved them to use this word subsistence. And so subsistence has to do with the manner of being, yeah. right? So it has to do, uh, so it, it can mean person, uh, but not the way we use it today, right? So when you think of a person, you think of an individual who is completely on their own. Um, subsistence means more like it's the form in which the divine being exists, Yeah, right? So um, it's, it's, we have one God, one nature, yep. right? One essence, but three subsistence, subsistences. Uh, the the form in which God uh, takes. Oh yeah, and this is like this is this is at the heart of uh, you use that word orthodoxy, right? Like yeah. this is at the heart of orthodoxy and the uh, the Catholic creed. Whoa. Oh, Why are you yeah, s- small C, uh, small oh, oh. C, small C, small C. The the Catholic, the universal creeds. I mean. 
Uh, continuing on here, the father is of none, neither begotten nor proceeding. The son is eternally begotten of the father, the Holy Spirit proceeding from the father and the son, all infinite without beginning, therefore, but one God who is not to be divided in nature and being, but distinguished by several peculiar relative properties and personal relations. So, I mean, we're talking then we're, we're talking about the Trinity here. Joe, how do, how do we how do we define the Trinity? I mean, I know we have a lot of bad examples you know, when people start talking about... Hey, why don't uh, we talk about bad examples? Oh, you want to talk about that first? Hey, hey guys. Hey, stop it. Yeah. Stop it with the stop it with the analogies. Yeah, I mean, what about that one that, with the... Uh, I'm trying to think. Steam, ice, water. They're all water. Right? H2O. H2O, right? right? So it's it's it, it can be... It can like be steam. Gas, yep. Gaseous, whatever. Yep, yep, yep. It could uh, be solid. A high, ice, uh, solid. And it could be... Fluid, water, water. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. But like it's like all the, you know, they're yeah. all the oh, three it's all, but it's all H two O. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't work. It's just yeah. modalism right there. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's 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 pretty bad. Or you could do like the what the the sock uh, foot shoe foot sock shoe. There you I've go. Never Trinity. Heard that. Yeah, that's a thing. I've never yeah. heard that. Yeah, you got no. the foot and the sock and the no. shoe. That's a thing. That's not a thing. Well, you know what? It's no it's no worse than uh, the four leaf clover. Well, what, you mean the three leaf one? Yes, the three leaf. Four leaf one is the yes. lucky one. Dang it. Yes. Dang it. Yes. I got four leaf clover stuck <laughs> into my head because it, it's the lucky one. <laughs> Luck. Oh, uh, so like, it's like the three leaf clover, right? Like, oh, so it's got three leaves. It's like, God, it's like one clover, but it's got three leaves again, which is not a good representation of, of the Trinity at all. There's the egg. There's, I don't know. Wait, what's the egg one? Oh, like the, the yolk the and yolk? the white what? and the shell. Oh, all right, mm-hmm. all right. Okay, okay. Yep. So- yep. It's just a lot of bad analogies out there. Yeah, don't. I know. Here, they all are going to break down at some point, and they and all pretty have quickly. Issues. They pretty break fast. down pretty quick. Exactly. So forget it. Accept the fact that it's a mystery, and you know there are ways of talking to your children because I think a lot of these are, are stemming from how do yeah. you how do you share with children? You want your kids to believe it so bad, exactly that you take it out of the realm of mystery and complexity, and you go, "It's like a flower with three leaves." Is that how they say it? Oh, is that, that is that, definitely that is the tone? that's how they sound to their kids. That's how they sound. Yeah, because their, their kids kid. know this is dumb. Oh yeah, the kids sitting there going, no, yeah. no, this yeah. is this I, is some heresy. There's no, there's right no here. transcendence here. I need something <laughs> a little bit more than that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. don't uh, don't do that. Don't don't use those analogies because it, it it doesn't it doesn't translate. It's better to say, hey, listen, you know what? This is a mystery. There is one God. There is only one God, but He has eternally existed uh, in, in three subsistences or as three persons. Yeah. Eternally exist. So it's not modalism. It is God. One God, one essence, one nature, but uh, three persons who make up that God. And yeah, that's a little, that sounds a little crazy. It does. Um, so if you were talking to your kids, I mean, is that kind of how you would define the Trinity? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one God that who eternally exists as three persons. That's how I've, I've done it. And that, I mean, again, they're only going to get as much as they, as they can at any yeah. given age. And how much of this do we ultimately get even as adults? Yeah. I don't really worry about it. I mean, you know, if faith is a gift of God. It's going to come from a plain, uh, understanding of, of a plain preaching of the, of the scriptures. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I would say let's take it easy on this. And but okay, so if, if we're saying this right, let, let me just put it this way: mm-hmm. I got this technical mysterious doctrine. Okay, it's at the heart of of orthodoxy, right? The yeah. father is of none. Like that's that question your kid asked you, and, you, and during your ordination. Oh yeah, if God is how, how do you go? If, how how could how is God alive? Or wait, is how's it going? What is it? Yeah, how does God exist if he was never born? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. uh. it's a good one. Well, the father is of none. Yeah, and. Uh, neither begotten nor proceeding on top of it. Well, the Son is eternally begotten of the Father, but eternally existing. And the Holy Spirit is eternally proceeding from the Father and the Son. Um, All infinite without beginning, therefore, but one God. So we have this one God who exists in this mysterious um, trinity, and it means something for us at at a very foundational level and at a very personal level. The doctrine of the trinity I, I feel like the doctrine of the Trinity is sort of treated like a, yeah, yeah, I believe that, but who cares? Yeah. I, most, I, that's, how I, that's a vibe I get. Yeah, and I, I don't think people are intending that, right? Like no, they're not, they're not, they don't really, like it, but there's this, not, oh, I, I don't know how to use that word. Uh, I was going to say, it's like, no, that's not right. That's not right. Yeah, I, I'm just going to go with you. 
just people are distant from it. Maybe they haven't put much thought to it. Because maybe because we accept it's a mystery, I'm never going to be able to comprehend it. So I'm not going to exert the energy I'm out. to try to. I'm done. Yeah. Or it's. I think that could be one of them. I think it could also be that uh, you know our churches haven't done a really good job preaching yeah. and teaching. Like, hey, this is this is a relevant doctrine. Oh yeah. It's not just like oh this is some crazy aspect of like every doc. Let me put it this way: every doctrine that is true of God should have and does have, you just have to find it, it has a connection point to your heart, your soul, your life. Yeah. Um, now, it can't get to your heart, your soul, your life until that doctrine, whatever it is, isn't first connected to Christ in the gospel. So whatever it is, whether it's omniscience, divine simplicity, um, or or the Trinity, any doctrine, you have to be able to trace it um, in, in, in implication from it uh, to... Um, to the gospel, to Christ, and then to us. Now, you know what else is foundational, though, Joe? Like, when you talk about foundational, and you're talking about this is like foundation, mm, it's a gift. I mean, right, I feel right. like there's other gift. found, there, gifts. Yeah, there's yeah, other gift, there's other gift out there. There's a, something foundational out there that we can all experience now. Wait, you mean, so it's 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 offered to everybody, like the gospel is offered to everybody? Like, it's just like, every it, it's hey, who's going to respond like that? That pretty much, exactly. Are you, wait, are you talking about Table Talk Magazine? Yes, I am oh, talking about Table Talk Magazine. I like That's Table That's exactly it. So listeners for uh, Dr. Devotion, you can head on over to drdevotion.com slash Table Talk, and you can register and sign up for uh, 15 months. That's 15 crazy. 15 months. That's, you know, that's more than a year. It is more than a year, but yeah. you're only going to pay the price of a year of $23. So for $23, you get 15 months worth of print issues and access, digital access to all current issues and all uh, their backlog through 2012, I think it is. You know, it's it's a smartly written magazine. It's got great articles and it's got daily devotionals for every day. Yeah. So like now that's some, now some of the, you know, I mean, some authors are better than others, right? Wouldn't you oh, say? Sure. Well, that's true no matter who it is, right? Exactly. There are some authors who are better writers than others. Exactly. But so every go- author in Table Talk is an A-list author. Oh, I every author? I think every so. Every author. You think I so? Think, I think so. Who, name, name, name a couple of these A-listers. Mm, Nick Batzig. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll go with Nick on that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, John MacArthur. Oh, John MacArthur. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Who else? Who else? Uh, oh, uh, oh. Ligonier Duncan. Oh, Ligonier. That is an A-lister. <laughs> That's an A-lister. Who else, Joe? Look, my, Joe Thorne, I might have been. Oh, Joe that. Thorne? You, yeah, quite a bit. Uh, you know, well, I think uh, one year I wrote every month. Uh, oh, then, really? Every month? You yeah, did? they had me on. Yeah. Whew. And then, uh, and then other year I stopped subscribing. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 that's why they didn't ask me back for a, to have a regular call. <laughs> oh, is that why it was? You know what's funny, what, what's awesome is that like Legionnaire has like incredible content, but then it looks good as well. Like it yeah. really has good design. And tw- twenty three dollars for twelve months is really good. Oh yeah, that's I really agree. good. But twenty three for fifteen months, I mean, uh, that's pretty awesome. I'm really excited about this, and it's it's the kind of product where. And ministry, where like we, and it's like this with all the stuff that we do, man, we really want to encourage you guys to check it out. Like, yeah. go on there, do your, uh, do you get the three? You can do a three month trial, but that's free. Yeah, so that's three more months. Oh, so now it's eighteen, 18 months for for twenty three dollars. That's pretty good. That's, that's just, you know what? Just go and do that. Hey, just go do it. You want to make Jimmy feel better? Oh yes, please go sign up. Go sign up. Mm-hmm. So go drmotion dot com slash table talk. All right. So this doctrine is incredibly relevant to us. Um, and that it's the last line, right? It's the last line yeah. that, that they have in there in that. Uh, you want to read that for us? Sure. Uh, which doctrine of the Trinity is the foundation of all our communion with God and comfortable dependence on him? And I love that. Oh, yeah. It's the foundation of all our communion with God. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we're, what we're talking about here then is, is salvation, right? We're talking about our union with God and our ongoing uh well, communion. I'm trying to think of a, of, yeah. a, of another word there. Well, but. let's 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 go ahead and, and get to communion in just a minute. All right. All right Let, all let's because right. like you're right. That is, I think the it's the most important word for me, exper- in terms of experiential theology. That's the most important word here. That it, it it takes the doctrine of the Trinity and it goes. Listen, this is the foundation for your communion. Yeah. Your your intimate relationship, experiential relationship with God. So that's really great. So the doctrine of the Trinity. Is, is really is the foundation of our communion with God, 
because it is our understanding of God as a Trinity mm. who accomplishes the work of salvation for us. Yeah, so right? I mean, what we're talking that is uh, like Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will. So we see here the Father elects, the Father yeah. uh, uh, chooses predestines those who will be his own. Mm -hmm. And I love this, that, you know, um, the, the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, all working in perfect harmony to accomplish salvation, and yet they have, they're doing different things. Yeah. So the Father, you know, elects, uh, and he sends the Son. And I, I said this today, it just happens to, to be a parallel idea. I said this today during the sermon, that the, we, we spend a lot of time, some of us especially, some people in particular, spend a whole lot of time debating just how sovereign God is in salvation. And they debate it, and pretty much the only way in which they, they deal with the sovereignty of God in salvation is when they're pushing back against it or debating it. But if you can't rejoice in the sovereignty of God in salvation, then you are missing it. You are you will misunderstand the whole thing. Because how you have to define it, we're going to disagree on stuff, but Jesus rejoices in uh, the sovereignty of God's election. And Jesus rejoices in, in these things. The, the Father uh, rejoices over those that he has chosen. We're supposed to rejoice in it. Like, you got to be able to say, look at what the Father has done. Yeah. He chose us in Christ before we were even born, that we would be holy and blameless for him. And the Father's election of us is connected to the son's redemption of us, right? So the father chooses mm -hmm. who will be redeemed, then it's the son who actually comes to redeem. You stay in Ephesians. Yeah. Uh, just scroll down to verse seven here. It says, in him, in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace. So in Christ, through his death on the cross, you know, we have, you know, what's called his passive obedience, his passive righteousness, receiving the wrath of God mm -hmm. and uh, taking away our guilt and our trespasses so we're cleansed. I mean, th this work of redemption is what fits us for heaven and what fits us for communion with God. And then we've got the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit and the doctrine of regeneration. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and read that, uh, Joe, uh, John 3, 1 to 10. Let's go ahead. Yeah, well, I read the whole thing. Yeah, it's go like, ahead. It's go like ahead. a whole thing. I know, go ahead. Ready? Eh, no, it's all right. Now, there was a man of the yeah, Pharisees named it. Nicodemus, ruler of Jesus. Ba, ba, ba. Jesus says, hey, uh, you got to be born. Did again. you just ba, 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 I, the, the word of God? Eh, I didn't, I don't know. I was just saying, <laughs> so it's, it's a big paragraph. It's a big paragraph. I just can't believe you're ba, ba, ba. I, I, I just, you know, nobody, I can't read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, but Jesus says what? Not only must you um, be born again, but Jesus says very specifically, you must be born of the Spirit. Right? Yeah. This is a spiritual rebirth. So it's the Father who elects, it's the Son who redeems, and it's the Holy Spirit who regenerates. And uh, and these are just three ways in which Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are involved in the work of salvation. There's a much, much more oh, yeah. that we could talk about. So it, the Trinity, right, God, our triune God, this is the foundation of our communion with God. The Trinity and salvation that's the basis mm. of our communion. Now, the question is what you were bringing up earlier. Like, what is communion? And you know what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to read from your boy. We're going to read. Oh, gonna get, your, your boy, Dwayne. No, no we're not, not going to read. The, no, oh, not, we're no. not reading for Dwayne. Who, who's my boy? John Bunyan. No, thank you. I didn't Yes, John oh, I was right. Owen. John Bunyan. I always do John you, Bunyan. You I, did it. I, yes. I, I, <laughs> That's I got why confused. I asked. I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. He's going to do it again. I, oh, listen, He's going to do it again. I've, okay, listen. I've read more John Owen than you have read. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I cannot remember his name. Yeah. See, I have to I have to defend myself and justify myself. Yeah, I know. So I'm yeah, just going to let you do that and make very, you look uh, foolish. Uh, very insecure. Please, so. <laughs> everybody, please know that I, I really do like read John mm -hmm. Owen. And John mm -hmm. so, okay, yeah, John so, Owen, what, Communion no, the book? with God. Com it's the book, Communion, Communion with God. God yes. And what's the version that you like? We're gonna oh, I really like the, uh, the Crossway version uh, that they put out. They've, they've got some helps at the beginning and... And, and it's updated uh, English. So I, I really enjoy that that one. Okay, so this is an important doctrine. It's an important truth. So so pay attention. We're just going to read a little bit. And we're going to go old school because we're, you know, doctrine and devotion. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to read the, the original, not the updated language. But how, let's, let's, let's get into how John Bunyan... Uh, John Owen. Continue with John Owen, please. John Owen. All right, do you want me to start? Yep, you start. All right. Owen. Owen. Owen Strand. Nope. 
This, oh, this is a better uh, Owen. This uh, John. No, that's for sure. A taller one. That's for sure. Oh, stop it. Oh, my gosh. Owen is so tiny. No, don't. You know how you short you Owen Strayton is? You can't do that. He comes up to my shoulders. That's how short he is. Okay, maybe you can say it then. Okay. You're allowed to if he's... Okay. All right. John Owen says... John Owen. Communion is the mutual communication of such good things as wherein the persons holding that communion are delighted, bottomed upon some union between them. So it was with Jonathan and David. Their souls clave to one another in love. There was a union of love between them, and then they really communicated all issues of love mutually. In spiritual things, this is more eminent. Those who enjoy this communion have the most excellent union for the foundation of it, and the issues of that union, which they mutually communicate, are the most precious and most eminent. So communion here, uh, John's talking about it in general, right? He's, mm-hmm. and he's, he's talking about it in, in a worldly sense, but between brothers or sisters or brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. It's just, it, it is this mutual communication of good things who uh, between people who are united. And um, and so it's intimate. It involves love. It is There is a joy and a rejoicing. Of course, he points to Jonathan and David. Um, obviously, 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 I'm David. Obviously, yes, I'm David. you are and, Jonathan. And, yes, wait, how is it? You're, you're Jonathan. Okay. Just stop it. It's you, okay. First of all, David you're, was short. Sh- you're David you're Jonathan. Short. And you're Jonathan. I, just okay. stop it. How, why am Jan- I Jonathan? Why? Just tell me why. Why? Because mm-hmm. yeah. you're so clingy. What? You're so clingy. Stop oh, it. Oh, please. You, you, can't, you can't play any musical instruments. David could. Can you? Oh, yes. What do you play? Um, I the can, radio? I can, <laughs> the, the recorder? <laughs> the recorder? No, you do not. Tape recorder? Oh, see, I knew it. I <laughs> no, knew I can it. play guitar. I can play, I can play like... You I can know, play I know, guitar? I know like seven, uh, five or seven chords, yeah. Okay, and, I, I, and I can play the hand about this, drums. Then? Hold on. Are you willing to... Uh, I can do hand drums. I didn't want to do hand drums. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah? On stage on a Sunday morning in front of everybody? Mike? Uh, uh, yeah, I've okay. Been, yes, I, I, I've, done, done, I've, done, done, I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. Not yeah. on Sunday morning. Well, you've got... Because you're, you're pretty ethnic. You know, you're probably good with that. So, I'm going to continue. What happened? What happened? I'm going to continue wait, why with did you, John why, Owen here. Wait, did I offend you? Our communion, Is that a microaggression? Then. Our communion, wait. then. Wait, hang on, hang on. So, this is... Before we... Because we're going to go on. Mm-hmm. So, communion... We must. Communion is this intimate experiential relationship where people are communicating good toward one another, right? Yeah. All right. So now, farther down uh, in this work, uh, John gets to our communion with God. Yep. Uh, Our communion then with God consisteth in his communication of himself unto us with our returnal unto him of that which he requireth and accepteth flowing from that unions, which in Jesus Christ we have with him. And it is twofold. First, perfect and complete in the full fruition of his glory and total giving up of ourselves to him, resting in him as our utmost end, which we shall enjoy when we see him as he is, and two, initial and complete, in the first fruits and dawnings of that perfection which we have here in grace. Such a great paragraph. Wonderful paragraph. So this this idea then of communion with God, Mm -hmm. is God God communicating himself to us? Correct. Correct. Which we have in Scripture. Yep. Yep. And and we respond to that. So he, really, I mean, we've got it in the personal work of Jesus. Yes. We've got it in Scripture. Yep. And and what we have our hands on right now is Scripture. We respond to that in faith and repentance, which yep. He is requiring of us, but then also accepting in us. And so this, all of this, is dependent upon our union with Christ, which is why union with Christ is such a big deal in Reformed theology. Oh, absolutely, because even though our communion with God will ebb and flow, right. our union with God is is static. It, right. Like it's not moving. It it can't move because it's it's built upon the personal work of Christ. Yeah. It's built upon what He has done in our salvation. It has nothing mm. to do with us, but Him and Him alone. And so our union uh, never diminishes, but our communion, how we experience. Uh, our yeah, our, how we experience our relationship with God right. ebbs and flows. So okay, so let's just break this down. First, he talks about the perfect and complete communion that we're going to have when Jesus comes back. Yeah, all right, which is sweet. We want that. Wonderful. We desperately want that. We ain't got that right now. No, we have the promise of that. Yep, but we ain't got it now. Don't have it now. What we have now is two initial and incomplete in the first fruits and dawnings of that perfection which we have here in grace. Okay, so why is this actually encouraging? When yeah. it says it's in, it's incomplete and it can ebb and flow, why is this an encouraging uh, truth here? Well, yeah, I mean, there's two things here. One is uh, just with I'm talking about specifically number two. Yeah, uh, we which we have here in grace. So mm. for me, 
just that that relationship, the communion we have with God now is a gift from God. It's yeah. not something that we've earned. It's something that is given. And so we experience that based upon the goodness and mercy and grace of our God. God didn't pick you to be his friend because you're such a good friend. It's a little bit like us. Well, yeah, yeah I didn't pick I, you. I just allowed I, you. And, and, I, you're welcome. And, and am I a good friend? You're there. You but, know. but I'm not that good. You're present. You know, you know eh, sometimes. Physically. Physically present, but well, you know, one day that, out of the week, that. yeah. And so, like, yeah, like I'm not a good friend, but no, no, nevertheless, not. nevertheless, I'll still allow you to stick around. Yeah. See, and That's so it. God did not choose us because we're good yeah, people. But, and the part I, I I really love about this one is initial and incomplete in the first fruits and dawnings of that perfection. Mm-hmm. So right now, for uh, at times, there's this I experience beautiful communion with God. Right. Right. And it's like, it's like taste and see that the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. And that is, but a taste. Just imagine what it's going to be like. There's like that future hope. Every time there's that, that experience or every time there's that sense of like when I'm drawing close to God or I'm having this sweet season of communion with Mm -hmm. God, it's like, Oh my goodness, this is, this, this is great. Now I can't even, my mind's going to be blown later. Yeah. You know? And it's, I think it's encouraging as well because, like, like we, we were made for that. So it's like, we're not, when I think it's like the fact that I do have communion now with God in part, it's the assurance like, okay, so this is coming. Like it's, 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 it's like a double assurance. Like, okay, so God has told me in his word, I believe this, but then I have this experiential basis as well. Like, wow, I'm, ex- I'm, I'm tasting of this now. Mm-hmm. That, so I know what's coming. Yeah. I, I just don't know it in full. I, I think that's really important. So if we're saying uh, that the doctrine of the Trinity is the foundation for our communion with God and the reality of the Trinity and the work of the Trinity and mm-hmm. salvation is our is the foundation of our communion with God, um, let's talk about some some practicals uh, on this. So, like number one, maybe would be um, how do we get a better understanding of the Trinity, and number two, um, how how is it that we wind up um, ebbing in our communion with God, and then what can we do to begin to flow in our communion with God, right? Yeah, so, so the first one's how do we grow, and the do second we, one's how, why do we f- flow? Like, wait, wait. No, no. How's it three, three parts. The first part is right. um, how do we basically get a better understanding of the doctrine of the Trinity? Okay. And 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 even the doctrine of, of communion, for that matter. Yeah, I mean, I think one is Scripture, right? Like, is, is reading Scripture, uh, delving deep into Scripture, um, I would also say read John Owen. I mean, that's like yeah, good, but I'm absolutely. talking about like focus. You know, I want to be obviously, you know, Bible centric here. Uh, but there's some great helps out there. There's some great helps like John Owen's uh, communion with God. Uh, oh, you know what? I know another one, Joe. Yeah. I know another one. Uh, Experience of the Trinity. Have you heard the author? Whatever. Have you heard that author? Yeah. Have you even heard of the book Experiencing the Trinity? Yeah, it sounds it's it sounds like some hipster new Calvinism nonsense. Oh goodness! Well, it must be because it's by Joe Thorne. So uh, both of those are from Crossway. Some some great resources. You think of anything else? Oh, yeah, the, the Holy Trinity um, by Robert Leatham. Um, you know, that's a it's a bigger, more comprehensive work. Um, you know, you, Sproul has a really small bro, small book mm-hmm. on on the Trinity. We'll we'll link to that stuff for you. But you, listen, you got to read. God gave the church teachers and preachers for a reason, and we need people who um, have better insight than we do to speak to us and to teach us and to instruct us. So, listen, you want to grow in your understanding of the Trinity? Take it seriously, especially now that you know that this is at the foundational level for our communion with God. You ought to be interested. Like, hey, I better I better take this seriously. Okay, so then getting to this practical issue of um, communion with God, what are the reasons that we tend to have an interruption of our communion with God? Yeah, I mean, I would think uh, when we're out of the Word or when we are, I guess, not separated. I would, okay, well, first and foremost, in, in God's providence, you know, there might be a season, Right. Like you're struggling, you're, you know, in the midst of turmoil and, and stuff. Uh, you might feel distant from God, though God is still near. Right. But then there's also sin. You know, our sin separates. Um, and then I would think when we when we separate, I think we, uh, I'm thinking like the means of grace, right? Like when we're not in the word, when we're not in prayer, when we're not part of corporate, corporate worship, when we're not part of uh, uh groups, right? Like, uh, you know, small groups or community groups, Bible group, Bible study groups, whatever you want to call them. 
Yeah, I think that's good. I mean, I, I think I mean everything you just said sort of breaks down into we we have an interruption in our communion with God when we neglect the means of grace, yeah. when we neglect repentance mm. personally, and when we neglect community. Yeah, that's um, all the things I just said. So, so I'm saying like yeah. organize them. Yeah, yeah. Just or, yeah well, you are. You were kind of rambling. No, that's your you're job. Like rambling all no, over. See, no, 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 see, I am. I'm the content. You just package it. No, no. You're, you, no, you're no. the small package. No, you're the small package. Tijuana Smalls was right. No, listen. Mm. You are the paint. All you are is the paint on my easel, and I take the paint and I paint. I'm Bob Ross. That's who I am. No, you're no Bob Ross. Oh, I'm Bob Ross. No, do you have you're the the paint. You don't have no hair. You know Bob Ross. Well, I, I don't say I look That's like right. Bob Ross. Exactly. Continue. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, yes, as I was saying, neglecting the means of grace, neglect of repentance, and neglect of community. So, here's the thing it's like, okay, so God gave us the means of grace, right? It, to draw near to Him and to know Him. And so, it, it's not just that like sin interrupts our uh, communion with God. There will always be sin. It's the lack of repentance because repentance is yeah. what immediately, re- oh, yeah. like experientially reconnects it. Um, and then, of course, you got to have community. So I think those are things that tend to get in the way. Therefore, what we do need to do is we, we you have to be in the, look. You got if you want communion with God, you got to be in the church. You got to be in the church. Oh, yeah. You're not going to have real intimacy with God outside of the local church. That doesn't mean. That doesn't mean um, you can only have it inside the walls of the church building. What I'm saying That's is... That's right. Is, I like to have it Saturday nights, um, you know, when we do our church in the park. Really? Yeah, yeah. I know, you, do, you do church in the park? Yeah, yeah, every Saturday night, yeah. You, yeah. you and who? Uh, well, me and Jesus. Oh, just, just it's you? It's just Jesus and I. Just you? Yeah. I don't even know if Jesus shows for that. Oh, no, he I'm shows. Not, oh, really? He shows. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, likes it. I don't know. I don't know. This sounds a little, a little no, fishy. No, no, no. You said it doesn't have to be in the four walls, Joe. Yeah. I, I'm going yeah. to well, go ahead and move outside that. But what I do mean is that um, the church, as the people of God, where the means of grace are you know, organized and offered, um, where we have brothers and sisters speaking into our lives, that's where you're going to find it. So, um, you know, you make the use of the means of grace. Uh, take personal inventory. Uh, you know, when you feel grief over your sin, um, and if you don't feel grief but you recognize your sin, repent, uh, turn away from it. But to f- try to do this outside of the community is uh, of faith, as I think, largely going to be fruitless, unless you're providentially hindered, in which case I do think God sustains us rather well. But this chapter, man, is good. It's technical. It's a bit mysterious. And it, it's exciting because it it makes me want to know God more. Mm-hmm. And it, there's this built-in assurance, like, wow, I can know and have communion with God because He is... Um, the God who is, he is a triune God who is close and present, who who chooses and redeems and regenerates, and um, man, it uh, it does. It, it encourages me to um, draw near with the, uh, with the eager assurance that God's going to draw near to me. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo or on Facebook slash Dr. Devotion. You can head on the website, drdevotion.com. There you can contact us. You can sign up for the email blast or hit up the store, joefostore.com, and grab some here some Over swiggity the, swag some sweetie well no it's not sweetie swag because it's 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 not stuff we all get yeah right yeah you gotta buy it yeah but you know but what i you, said swiggity swag i know but you know what you could get is swiggity you could register swag. for uh or not register but uh sign up and get uh 15 months for 23 dollars table talk magazine drmotion.com slash table talk fresh pod every monday and thursday blog post on wednesdays video content when available later yeah i know you're trying to say something what are you gonna say nothing what were you gonna say? Nothing. I was gonna say that.